In this video, I'm going to be going over the assembly of the Pocket Photodiode Geiger Counter from Jameco.com. The time required is three to four hours, depending on your experience, and the experience level is intermediate. This is one of hundreds of kits that they have at Jameco.com. I have just received my package from Jameco, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So you're going to cut along one of the sides here to cut the tape and then just peel peel that side open open that up there's a box and it's wrapped in this paper here you got a nice box here from a Jane Co electronic view do it yourself kits and components and then the bag of the actual components right here I've opened up the bags here and I'm gonna run through the components and parts real quick so first of all you've got a nice little box here perfect for holding your components um, you got your LEDs here's your battery holder capacitors, a little knob, speaker, capacitors, some resistors, transistors, resistors, capacitors, potentiometer, some more resistors, another capacitor, some more resistors, uh, op amp, um, a housing, the PCB, and a switch and some little pins, a two pin header, some transistors, and this looks like a little photodiode. And you've got the enclosure here, aluminum, very shiny, very nice looking. And then you've got the instructions printed out on paper right here. So some of the tools required for the kit, in the instructions it says a soldering iron and solder which I'm using a soldering station which makes soldering a lot easier although you can use just a regular soldering iron if you have one um, electrical tape, aluminum foil, a drill, drill bit hand tools such as wire cutters, wire strippers and some jumper wiring which I'm just going to use some miscellaneous wire and three coin cell batteries which you can buy pretty much anywhere and two pieces of copper tubing which you will need to buy at Home Depot which is relatively cheap so you want to make sure you have all those things and then run through this list of materials and make sure you have everything and there wasn't anything lost and once you have everything you can start the instructions one in the instructions is to position the IC socket which looks like this this little piece here that holds the IC into the PCB here so you want to it's very important to have it in the right place or else some of your other components won't fit on the board so you're going to want to put it right in the middle about there so that way everything is based around it and you can fit everything else on your board so just move it around until you get it about right in the center and then you're ready to solder it on so once you've positioned the IC socket into the board you want to flip it over and set it on the other side of the board, the, the side with the metal plating. And then you want to heat up your soldering iron and solder the eight pins into the board. Once you've gotten the socket soldered onto the board, you want to take into consideration which which position or which way you have the socket facing so the little notch at the top of the socket that shows where and how to position your IC into the socket so just take that into consideration while you can while you continue doing the instructions. Step in the instructions is to solder together pins 1 and 6 of the IC socket so on the back you can see here that I've connected the pins just soldering the pads together on the board 
and that will connect pins 1 and 6 and if you can see here if the notch is in the top for you then the pins are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so that's how that goes if you need to figure out which pin is which and then to test that the pins are connected you can get a multimeter and turn it to your connectivity and then just stick one probe in one pin one and then one probe in pin six and you should hear a beeping sound like that and that means you have done that step correctly skipped ahead to step nine and so far I've soldered two capacitors and two resistors to the board and I just wanted to let you take a look at that before you move on to step 10 which is the photodiode once you have completed steps 10 through 15 you should have the photodiode set up something similar to this you should have four connections coming off of it that go to the board one is from a capacitor and three are from jumper wires they go to the PCB and so once you have that all set up and it looks pretty much right you are now ready to solder it to the board once you attach the photodiode circuit to the proto board here it should look something like this you should have four connections one connection going to pin three two connections going to ground the capacitor is one of them and then one connection that you can just put anywhere towards the top because that's going to connect to the emitter of this transistor which is the next step now if you have completed step 18 and 19 you should have the transistor soldered on here with three other components the 100 UF capacitor 100 NF capacitor and the 150 K ohm resistor and it should look like something like this and you should have your whole uh, photodiode circuit set up and attached to the board so that it looks pretty similar to that in step 21 it says to connect the ground buses which are these two strips of metal plates that are all connected that you will later connect the ground connection to you can see them there and there but there's a strip where they're not connected here so you need to put a wire to connect both of those just a small jumper wire a couple steps you'll be attaching this potentiometer to the proto board and the easiest way to do that is to solder a couple of wires from the three leads off of the potentiometer I repurposed some of the leads that I cut off of resistors and capacitors and actually just soldered them to the ends of here because they're nice and firm that I can put them right into the proto board I've now soldered the potentiometer to the proto board as you can see here I put it pretty much in the middle at the end of the board the opposite end of the photodiode as you can see here it just took three little soldering joints and I can just cut these off and then I just have to continue and attach it to the rest of the circuit successfully connected the potentiometer to the IC pin 5 uh, through a 1k resistor as you can see through I had to uh, just solder this in a straight line like that and the other pin of the potentiometer I just soldered right to the ground bus here and then this one I it is plus 9 volts and I will just have to wait until I connect the battery to connect that I to attach the buzzer which is polarized and you can tell there's a plus on the little sticker here and the plus side connects to pin 7 of the IC and you can just connect that by soldering it under and then the ground just connects to the ground bus and you can connect or you can uh, solder this in wherever you want wherever uh, space allows you to but in the design on the in the instructions you sh it puts it right about here so that's where I put it once you get the speaker in the LED and the resistor for the LED in there you need to attach the battery holder the coin cell holder which I had a lot of trouble with because it was supposed to go on the surface and they sh actually shaved off about a quarter of it in the design uh, for it to fit in the box but I couldn't even fit it 
so it would go flat so I just attached some leads to it as you can see and uh, and just raised it so that it would sit on top of all the other components and that I can still access it though so that it's really however it works for you whether you can get it flat and shave it off a little bit or you want to just raise it like I did and not have to shave it at all that's up to you and once you get that you can solder all of the components that need plus nine volts to that connection right there like the I believe the potentiometer in pin eight of the uh, of the IC and there's I th one of part of the transistor and once you get that you're almost done and then you just need to put it inside of the enclosure here you can see that I've used red jumper wires to attach all the components that needed plus nine volts to the plus nine volt on the battery holder and I've used white or gray jumper wires to connect any component that needed ground to the ground bus so now that everything's connected and you have your battery holder and all the other components all you need to install is the switch in order to set up the switch you're gonna need to get two of the little pins that go on the end of these wires you're gonna need two jumper wires as well and solder those into there as you can see I've done and then on the other ends of both of those wires you're just gonna solder them to the switch and once you have that you need one of these white housing things and you're just gonna put these ends inside of the end of those so that the the two pin housing or the two pin header will fit into these this white housing just like that so you have the switch totally assembled and you have this white housing put on tightly to the two wires you just need to slide this white housing into the two pin header and then your switch is connected once you have the whole circuit put together and soldered uh... you'll need to drill four holes in the enclosure one hole which i've already done is on the end for the photodiode and then I still need to drill three more holes one on the side for the switch and two on the top for the potentiometer and the LED as you can see I had a little bit of trouble with the uh, battery holder here um, it didn't fit real well and I couldn't get the batteries to fit in it so I had to make my own little battery holder which would, should work fine um, if you have any trouble with that you can basically figure out how to do that on your own just I just use a rubber band and a couple jumper wires and it has to equal nine volts so that's three of the little coin cell batteries which are three volts build all four holes into the enclosure one for the LED the potentiometer the switch and the photodiode you should make sure you have all of the components on the inside tightly fit and soldered together then you can screw on the top plate by screwing in these four screws on the edges and then you can put on this top knob by screwing in the hidden screw on on the side of this and then you're ready to turn it on so just flip the switch and you should hear a buzzer and the LED and if you don't hear that then you have some sort of problem with the soldering and you re you should retrace your steps backwards and see what you've done wrong um this kit is advertised for three to four hours re of required time which it took me probably a good three hours total so that's pretty appropriate and the experience level is said to be intermediate which is pretty appropriate as well because you will need there is a lot of soldering and drilling and this probably isn't the best kit for a first kit or a beginner um, I would suggest this maybe as a second or third project it's really you can do it as an expert or an intermediate it's a really fun kit to put together thank you for watching my video if you would like to check out this kit and many more, please visit jameco.com.